Valentine's Day is celebrated every February 14th as couples across the globe honor their spouses, partners, and sweethearts. Hundreds of years of traditions and customs have made it into the holiday that we observe today. Here are nine interesting facts about the holiday dedicated to love. Some trace Valentine's Day origins to a Christian effort to replace a pagan fertility festival that has been dated as far back as the 6th century BC. During the festival of Lupercalia, Roman priests would sacrifice goats and dogs and use their blood-soaked hides to slap women on the streets as a fertility blessing. According to legend, women would later put their names in an urn and be selected to be paired with a man for a year. Every year, thousands of romantics send letters addressed to Verona, Italy, to Juliet, the subject of the timeless romantic tragedy, the tragedy of Romeo and Juliet. The city marks the location of the Shakespearean tale, and the letters that reach the city are dutifully answered by a team of volunteers from the Juliet Club. Each year on Valentine's Day, the club awards the Cara Giulietta, Dear Juliet Prize, to the author of the most touching love letter. The Valentine's Day tradition of giving a box of candy started in the 19th century by Richard Cadbury, a scion of a British chocolate manufacturing family. With a new technique recently established at the company to create more varieties of chocolate, Cadbury pounced on the opportunity to sell the chocolates as part of the beloved holiday. History's first Valentine was written in perhaps one of the most unromantic places conceivable, a prison. Charles, Duke of Orleans, wrote the love letter to his second wife at the age of 21 while captured at the Battle of Agincourt. As a prisoner for more than 20 years, he would never see his Valentine's reaction to the poem he penned to her in the early 15th century. During the Victoria era, those who didn't want the attention of certain suitors would anonymously send vinegar valentines. These cards, also called the penny dreadfuls, were the antithesis of customary valentines, comically insulting and rejecting unwanted admirers. They were later used to target suffragettes in the late 19th and early 20th century. The term wearing your heart on your sleeve may have origins in picking a valentine. Smithsonian reports that during the Middle Ages, men would draw the names of women who they would be coupled with for the upcoming year while attending a Roman festival honoring Juno. After choosing, the men wore the names on their sleeves to show their bond during the festivities. The iconic chalky heart-shaped candies that have been passed out lovingly every Valentine's Day started out as lozenges. According to the Food Business News, pharmacist and inventor Oliver Chase created a machine that would quickly create the lozenges before switching to use the machine to create candy, later known as Necco wafers. Chase's brother came up with the idea to print messages on the candy in 1866, and the candies got their heart shape in 1901, appealing specifically to Valentine's Day sweethearts. In 2019, the Sweetheart brand of Conversation Hearts was suspended for a year as the candy's new owner, Spangler Candy Company, needed time to make a supply of the hearts for Valentine's. The chubby baby with wings and a bow and arrow that we call Cupid has been associated with Valentine's Day for centuries. However, before he was renamed Cupid, he was known to the ancient Greeks as Eros, the god of love. Eros, the son of Greek goddess Aphrodite, would use two sets of arrows, one for love and another for hate, to play with the emotions of his targets. It wasn't until stories of his mischief were told by Romans that he adopted the childlike appearance that we recognize today. 
The idea of using a kiss to sign off on Valentine's also has a long history, according to the Washington Post. The use of X came to represent Christianity, or the cross, in the Middle Ages. During the same time, the symbol was used to sign off on documents. After marking with an X, the writer would often kiss the mark as a sign of their oath. As the gesture grew among kings and commoners to certify books, letters, and paperwork, these records were described as having been sealed with a kiss. Here's another fact you may not know. Esther Howland became known as the mother of the American Valentine for the artistry and sentiment of her designs. Before she commercialized them, American Valentines were less romantic and more comic. Her inspiration came from the thoughtful and sweet greeting cards that were circulating in England and she decided to sell similar designs in the United States. Guess what? They took off. During the 1850s, she earned $100,000 annually, which is about $3 million today, according to Time magazine. In 1537, England's King Henry VII officially declared February 14th the holiday of St. Valentine's Day. The oldest known Valentine's Day card is on display at the British Museum in London. It dates back to the 1400s. By the middle of the 18th century, it was common for friends and lovers to exchange small tokens of affection or handwritten notes. Pope Gelasius declared February 14th St. Valentine's Day around 498 AD. In Wales, wooden love spoons were carved and given as gifts on Valentine's Day. Hearts, keys, and keyholes were favorite Valentine decorations on wooden spoons. These symbols meant the heart would be unlocked for love. In 2017, a study by diamond retailer James Allen found that 43% of millennials chose Valentine's Day as their top choice of day to propose or be proposed to. About 55% of Americans celebrate Valentine's Day and spend an estimated $19.6 billion a year, including more than $1.8 billion on candy alone. This year, in 2020, uh, men say they expect to spend $338 on Valentine's Day, and that's on the average. And the women? Just $64. In 2017, 40% of consumers told the National Retail Federation they wanted an experience gift, like tickets to a concert or other event, an outdoor activity, or an evening out, although only 24% planned to give one. This gift option is particularly popular with millennials. 45% of people ages 18 to 24 and 40% of people ages 25 to 34 said they planned to give experiences for Valentine's Day. Many Latin American countries know the holiday as El Dia de los Enamorados, Day of Lovers, or Dia del Amor y la Amistad, Day of Love and Friendship. Though couples exchange flowers and chocolate on this day, the holiday's focus is also directed at showing gratitude to friends. In Japan, it's customary for just the women to give confections to the men in their lives, with the quality of the chocolate indicating their true feelings, according to Fortune magazine. On March 14th, exactly a month later, the men repay the favor by celebrating the increasingly popular White Day. I mentioned one version of Valentine's Day to you, which that it derived from Lupercalia, a Roman festival. I did not tell you, however, that it actually starts on February 15th, where the men strip naked and spank young maidens in the hopes of upping their fertility. Well, here's the second theory. Roman Emperor Claudius II was trying to bolster his army. He then forbade young men to marry because apparently single men make better soldiers. So in the spirit of love, St. Valentine defied the ban and performed secret marriages. For his disobedience, Valentine was executed on, guess what, February 14th. People 
really do love their pets because according to another National Retail Federation poll, 27% of people celebrating Valentine's Day in 2020 say they are also buying gifts for their pets. Spending on Valentine's Day gifts for pets has also grown significantly, going from $450 million in 2010 to more than $1.7 billion. According to the National Confectioners Association, both men and women prefer to receive chocolate over flowers, but their survey also found that chocolate sales represent 75% or more of Valentine's Day candy purchases. According to a survey by the National Retail Federation, Americans spent $20.7 billion for Valentine's Day in 2019 and were expected to spend $27.4 billion in 2020. For our final fact, let's talk about flowers. Now, Valentine's Day gift giving just wouldn't be the same without fresh flowers. Whether you're giving a fresh cut bouquet, a live flowering plant basket, or an elegant single lawn stemmed rose, there's a lot going on behind the scenes to ensure that the consumer demand for floral Valentine gifts is met. Roses continue to dominate the Valentine's gift market in the United States, but in Denmark, the tradition is to exchange dainty white snowdrop flowers. Make the most of short-stemmed flowers by including them in a corsage, a way to express love and appreciation for other special women in our lives, like moms and daughters. The National Retail Federation claims that 2018 is a banner year for Valentine's Day spending, and that includes flowers. Of a projected $19.6 billion, more than a third of that will be spent on flowers. That's 35.6%. There's a modern twist to the spending, though. Over half of the celebrants plan to use their smartphones to make their buying decisions, and about 45% will use tablets to find bargains. Many consumers will be looking to beat the price of a dozen arranged long-stemmed roses, which averaged $85 in 2017, according to the Society of American Florists, the SAF. Even more budget-friendly? A gathering of unarranged long-stemmed roses for an average of $66. The language of love goes beyond roses, which made up 51% of Valentine flower sales in 2017. You can communicate your specific feelings and desires to your love with the traditional meaning of flowers. Send gardenias to your secret love, or purple larkspur to your first love. Forget about the classic dozen when it comes to giving roses for Valentine's Day. A gift of a single rose says that the recipient is the only one. Increase that to three roses if you wish to say, I love you. A gift of 11 roses means that the giver is the mystic flower in the dozen. Finally, an extravagant gift of three dozen long-stemmed roses said that the giver's heart belongs to the recipient. Where's the fragrance? The hybrid roses produced for Valentine's Day market are bred for perfect form and longevity in the vase, often at the expense of the fragrance. If you don't have access to homegrown heirloom roses, consider asking your florists to mix fragrant freesias, scented stock, or oriental lilies in with your rose bouquet. Online shopping has changed the logistics of the way customers shop for Valentine flowers and instant gratification rules. Florists responding to a SAF survey reported that 38% of Valentine orders came on the 14th, while more than 50% took Valentine orders on the 15th. Does your Valentine also have a February birthday? Honor the birthday and the romantic holiday by sending a mixed flower bouquet that includes violets, the birth flower for February. U.S. Customs and Border Protection protects consumers by screening hundreds of millions of imported fresh-cut Valentine flowers for pests and diseases, mostly from Colombia and Ecuador. Commonly intercepted pests include thrips, moths, and aphids. The bulk of these flowers enter the U.S. through Miami and Los Angeles, during the Valentine season of January 1st through February 14th. Valentine's Day is a bigger payday for florists when it falls on a weekday. Floral gift givers tend to send better flower arrangements to the recipient's office, where flowers can fall under the gaze of more admiring eyes. 
Thank you for joining me on this special edition of King Spirit Travels, Valentine's Day. I'm Cameron Farmer for King Spirit Travels. Until next time.